Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be working on some amazing holiday DIYs. First project up today, <laughs> well, we made a mess first of all, but we are going to take all of these adorable bottle brush trees. I got them off of Amazon. I have linked them in my Amazon shop in the floral and greenery list. Um, and that is down in the description box of this video if you'd like to get some for yourself. But I have pulled some thread spools some copper fittings and some old hardware and we are going to replace the little cheapy wooden bases with something way more high-end looking let's start off with the thread spools i'm just going to take the paper off some of these and honestly i don't care if a little bit of that paper stays on because i think it gives it a more like authentic vintagey look i like to group things in odd numbers so i've picked out five trees here look how pretty this cream and pink color are together and now i'm going to take a pair of wire cutters and trim off <laughs> the bottom they will go flying so be careful and now we'll just glue the little tree into the spool and i saved these i've got a couple little bags of them they do come in handy sometimes for crafts and stuff. I don't put, whoops, I don't put the glue down into the hole. I just put it right around the base of that hole. And then also a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue. This hot glue will hold it while the Eileen's tacky glue dries it for a nice permanent hold. When I am reselling things, I do like to use more than just hot glue especially when I'm shipping or if you have like a booth space where people are going to be picking things up and touching them a lot. You don't want your items falling apart in their hands. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what are some of your other favorite items to put these bottle brush trees in. I know y'all have some creative ideas. I'd love to hear them. I'd also love to know which style is your favorite. I think the pink and cream trees and the spools are mine. To purchase any of the paint, products, or my flips, head over to my website, upcyclebybree.com, and I'll be sure to drop all the links down in the description box below for you. For this next DIY, I've got a couple of these plaques that I got from an estate clean out, so they were free. I also grabbed some of the new JRV rice paper. This is the holiday edition. I've got the birds on holly and some of the vintage deer. All right, I got it cut out. Doesn't need to be exactly perfect in my opinion because I like to distress my edges down just a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and place it right over the wood. I thought about doing a background color, but I really like the way it looks just on here. I've really been enjoying this Sweet Pickens top coat for a decoupage medium. It's very, very matte. My, my, blah, blah, blah. It's my favorite top coat out of everything I carry. So just using a chip brush here, I'm gonna do one light coat over the entire oval front, just so all of it has the same matte finish, even though my decoupage paper doesn't necessarily cover the whole piece. This rice paper is nice and thick, very easy to work with. Once I have it in place, I'll just push down all these little holly edges, make sure they're flat. And it is so wrinkle resistant. Virtually no wrinkles there. Now let's go back over the top of it with another coat. I'm gonna kind of work in the middle and work my way outwards. And that way I don't lift up those holly leaves. Now we'll let it dry. Easy peasy. I used my pen to just trace around the area of the birds that I would like to use and cut them out. I applied them the same way as I did the deer. These had a chance to dry up overnight, and yes, I know you can still see the pin mark, but what I'm gonna do now is take some sandpaper, sand down around the edges, and that's going to break it off perfectly right around the edge of that oval. Not gonna lie, this process is super satisfying. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now I'm gonna take some 800 grit sandpaper and I'm just very lightly gonna distress this whole thing. So this piece doesn't have the edge that I need to go around, but I still just want to take my 800 grit sandpaper and give the whole thing a light distress just to kind of blend down those edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over the whole front of that oval so all the wood grain looks the same. To finish sealing and freshening the whole piece up, I've got my hemp oil here. Use a little chip brush and go along the edges and around where there was a little bit of sanding, right? And just freshen up that wood. Look what a beautiful shine it gives it. I'm gonna go all the way over this decoupage paper just a bit. Just gonna help everything look very uniform. And remember that decoupage paper is already sealed up. So it's not going to go anywhere. And even though we did take that 800 grit sandpaper over all of the wood, this hemp oil just takes all those very superficial scratches right out. Here is the look at the final project. Y'all, I am in love with this rice paper. It looks so vintage, so beautiful. And what a quick, beautiful gift this would be to give during Christmas time. Which one of these prints are your favorite? I have four on my website. For our next project, I'm going to be using some of these spindles and some of my Sweet Pickens milk paint. This is Haberdash. And then I'll also do a few in Basil and Red Wagon. If you've never used milk paint before, don't worry, it's not hard. I'm gonna take one part of warm water. I've got about a quarter cup here. Then I'm just gonna dry out my measuring cup so I don't lose a bunch of product. And so I can reuse this measuring cup for other colors. And then I will pour out the same amount, about a quarter cup here, of milk paint powder. We'll pour it in and mix it up. Now, if you want a really smooth, butter-like texture on your final milk painted finish, use an immersion blender and mix your paint up for several minutes. I like to have just a few clumps of powder and... Um, not blended paint in here because when it dries and I hit it with my orbital sander, it's going to flake off a lot better when it hits those little clumps. I let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes and I've got this nice like melted milkshake consistency. I'm using a chip brush so I can just toss it when I'm done because milk paint is hard to get out of your brushes. I'm going to give all of these spindles just one nice thick coat not even worrying about perfect coverage because once everything is dry, I get them cut down into smaller pieces and use my orbital sander with 120 or 220 grit sandpaper to get them all distressed. Here's what they look like once they're cut and distressed. The ones that still have the raw cuts left on them, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my DIY decrepit dust on a chip brush and just rub it right into that wood grain. I'm not using any wax or anything else and just darkening up that fresh cut to make it look a little more antique -y. Now I am using a tiny little drill bit here and making holes in the middle of all of these ornaments so we can start putting in our eye hooks. This is one of those projects where you want to make a lot at once. Set up your assembly line, get everything painted, get everything cut, get everything sanded, get everything drilled, everything decrepit dusted, and then every eye hook goes in. If you set it up in assembly lines like this, the whole process goes pretty well. Turn on your favorite YouTube video and get to work. Now I'm gonna use some of this rusty wire. I also have it linked on my Amazon store and we are just going to make little hangers for each ornament. Simply just lace them through and give it a couple of twists at the top. Pinch it just for a little extra hold and we'll just cut off any excess. And there we have it, our first little ornament. If you didn't like the gold, they sell these in black and silver. 
Um, and you could probably also just use a little bit of like DIY dark and decrepit to age them up a little bit, but I like a little bit of shiny mixed in with all of my chippy oldness. I love the beautiful matte finish of these, and since they were raw wood, that milk paint's not going anywhere. I didn't even seal any of these. I love the way they look as is. I'll be lotting these into groups of five and selling them on my website, but you could also sell them singly in a booth or a shop. For this last project, I went to Dollar Tree and stocked up. I'm going to be using a couple of my salvage wood pieces and use the big ones instead. So I'm just simply going to drill a little hole. Dollar Tree has some really amazing bottle brush trees this year, so y'all make sure you go check them out. I've got my DIY decrepit dust here. It's just a little powdered aging dust. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on and rub it right on into that wood grain with my fingertips. Notice how it just kind of helps that wood grain blend into the rest of the salvage wood since that was a fresh cut. No wax, no top coat, just straight onto that wood grain. The wire into my wood glue here. Such a quick, simple DIY. And then I'll also show you a couple of other style of trees that I got. I put them in some cute crocs. They're available on my site as well, and I'll be using a lot more of these trees very soon. Y'all drop me a comment down below. Let me know which one of today's projects were your favorite. If you love this type of flipping DIY video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below so I know what kind of content to bring you next week. Now, if you haven't, be sure to follow and subscribe. Check me out on all the social media platforms so you don't miss any new content. And until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends.